the title of my message today is Faith and Words. Today I want to explore some scriptures that finally explain to me what my grandma taught me many years ago. You see, growing up, my grandma used to tell me, child, always be careful of what you say. Whatever your mouth utters out, a voice in heaven will say, and so it is. Amen. My husband and I have been busy reading the Torah. Those are the first five books of the Bible, chronologically within a one year cycle. We refer to our weekly reading as a Torah portion and I refer to it as our treasure hunting. So I found it funny when Prader Ron talked about treasure hunting previously because that's what happens when you read the Bible daily and you know wow. make it a habit, you will always find treasures, Amen. always. Amen. In the next two weeks, we will be completing the book of Deuteronomy and I will be facing one of the saddest moments for me, saying goodbye to Moses and grappling with the fact that God didn't allow him into the promised land. For the longest time, I was bothered by the fact that God didn't allow Moses into the promised land. I sympathized with Moses in his one moment of weakness and I wondered if God judged him too harshly. I was also bothered by the fact that I was bothered. It's not good to stay in a place where you criticize God's judgment or question his character. Whenever you read the Bible and find your sensibilities don't line up with how God is described, you face a choice. You can reject God's ways and stand in judgment over him, or you can submit to God's ways and ask him to transform your sensibilities until they are more in line with his word. So I prayed for wisdom and discernment regarding this passage of the Bible. And I was reminded once more that sometimes the areas where God most offends us are the areas where we most need to grow. Yeah. Good. The examples written in the Old Testament are there so that we can learn not to repeat the same mistakes that our forefathers and spiritual leaders made. If we can learn these lessons from Moses, I think we can apply them to our situations today. So let's examine what kept Moses out of possessing God's promised land. In the book of Numbers, chapter 20, Moses was facing a big problem again. He was attempting to lead the people of Israel through the wilderness. There was little to no water to drink, and the people and the animals were all very thirsty. Numbers 21 through 5. Numbers 21 through 5. Then the entire community of the Israelites came to the desert of Zin on the first month and the people stayed in Kadesh. Miriam died and was buried there. There was no water for the community and they were gathered before Moses and Aaron. And the people quarreled with Moses and spoke, saying, If only we died when our brothers were dying before Yahweh. Why have you brought the assembly of Yahweh, us and our livestock, into this desert to die here? Why have you brought us from Egypt to bring us to this bad place? It is not a place of seed or figs or vines or pomegranate trees, and there is no water to drink. Moses turned to God and asked for help, and God responded with a set of 
very specific instructions. Let's read it. Numbers 26 through 7. 26 through 7. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the doorway of the tent of assembly. They fell on their faces and the glory of Yahweh appeared to them. Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, now let's see what God said to Moses. Verses 8 through 13. Take the staff and summon the community, you and Aaron your brother, and speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will give water. Bring out for them water from the rock and let the community and their livestock drink. God gave Moses a very specific set of instruction with a limited number of steps, five steps to be precise. One, take your rod. Two, get your brother Aaron. Three, gather the people before the rock. Four, speak to the rock. Five, give everyone a drink. These are not complicated steps, right? But yet people sometimes hear what they want to hear instead of what God says to them. Yeah. And that gets them into trouble in a very big way. As we read through the rest of this chapter, we find that Moses did not do what God told him to do. Five little things God told Moses to do. Five little specific steps of instructions from God. Was this complicated? No. Was this different? Yes. God had never given these instructions to Moses before. So maybe Moses had a struggle with them or maybe Moses just assumed he knew what God had said. Maybe he heard in his mind something different. I don't know. I can't pretend to know what Mo I can't pretend to know Moses' mind. What I do know is what I learned from observing the instructions of God. God rarely repeats exactly what he told you to do before. In Exodus 17, so I'm going back almost 40 years earlier. In Exodus 17, Moses encountered a semi-similar scenario, but that time it involved the parents and grandparents of the generation referred to in number 20. Let's read it together. So this is Exodus 17, 1 through 6. Exodus 17, 1 through 6. And all the community of the Israelites set out from the desert of Zin. Wait a moment, this is the same location. For their journeys according to the command of Yahweh, and they camped in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. And the people quarreled with Moses, and they said, give us water so that we can drink. And Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test Yahweh? And the people thirsted for water and the people crumbled against Moses and said, why ever did you bring us up from Egypt to kill us and our sons and our cattle with thirst? Sounds familiar? Yeah. And Moses cried out to Yahweh saying, what will I do with these people? A little longer and they will stone me. And Yahweh said to Moses, go on before the people and take with you some from the elders of Israel and the staff with which you strike the Nile, take in your hand and go. Look, I will be standing before you there on the rock in Horeb, in Horeb, and you will strike the rock. So 40 years ago, you will strike the rock and water will come out from it and people and the people will drink. If God 
told you to strike the rock last time, then guess what? This time you will probably be asked to do something different. Why? To God, the hidden things belong. Remember, in Deuteronomy 29, 29, Moses tells us, the hidden things belong to Yahweh, our God, but the revealed things belong to us to know and to our children forever in order to do all the words of this law. So back to Numbers 20. God gives Moses a very specific set of instructions with a limited number of steps. As I mentioned before, one, take the, your rod, two, get your brother Aaron, three, gather the people before the rock, four, speak to the rock, five, give everyone a drink. Let's read through the next verses to examine what Moses actually did. Numbers 20, 9 through 11. 20, 9 through 11. So, Moses took the staff from before Yahweh just as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron summoned the assembly to the presence of the rock. So far, so good. And he said to them, Listen, you rebels, can, you bring, can we bring out water for you from this rock? Then Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock with his staff twice. And abundant water went out and the community and their livestock drank. So Moses ma makes a great start to obeying God, but a really lousy ending. Here are the steps Moses took. Moses took the rod, check. Moses met with his brother Aaron, check. Moses and Aaron gathered the people together before the rock, check. So far, so good. Then, Moses then said to the people, Moses lifted his hand, Moses smote the rock, Moses smote the rock again, Moses gave everyone a drink. The first three steps seem to be perfect matches to the instructions that God gave to Moses. However, Moses omits one step from God's five-step plan, speak to the rock, and instead adds four of his own, own steps. Okay, the four steps that he added, Moses then said to the people, <clears throat> Moses lifted his hand, Moses smote the rock, Moses smote the rock again. When did God ever tell Moses to say anything to the people? I'm sure he had to say something to them to assemble them before the rock. But when did God tell Moses to speak to the people after they were all gathered together? Did God tell Moses to preach to the people? Did God say to tell the people anything at all? I don't think so. And when did God tell Moses to raise his hand or strike the rock? Not once, but twice. Remember, as soon as we start deviating from God's plan, even just a tiny deviation, we begin to miss it. And next, we fall into disobedience. And that's exactly what happened to Moses. He fell into disobedience. In verse 12, we learn of God's response. So, Numbers 20, verse 12. But Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron, Because you have not trusted in me to regard me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this assembly into the land that I have given to them. God reveals that at the core of Moses' disobedience, Moses struck the rock instead of speaking to the rock. So at the core of Moses' disobedience is lack of faith. 
Apparently, Moses had a problem with speaking to an inanimate object and expecting anything to transpire from merely spoken words. God was trying to teach his servant Moses a spiritual lesson, namely, that words have authority and power behind them. Wow. On a previous occasion in Exodus 17, God had told Moses to strike the rock to bring out water for the people. But this time, God changed the plan. If you did not realize it, God hardly ever does the same thing twice. According to God's instructions, this time, Moses was supposed to speak to the rock before the people. So while the people were watching, the people would have learned a valuable spiritual lesson also. Words have authority and power behind them. But Moses failed, and as a result, God told him that he would not enter with the people into the promised land. But this is just the beginning of the lesson. You see, we need to also pay attention to the symbolism in this story. Who did the Bible say the rock is? Let's see. 1 Samuel 2.2 2. There is no one holy like Yahweh, for there is no one besides you, and there is no rock like our God. Mm. Mm. 2 Samuel 22, 3. I take refuge in God, my rock, my shield, and the strength of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge. Oh, my Savior, you will save me from violence. Mm. 2 Samuel 22, 32. For who is God apart from Yahweh, and who is a rock apart from our God? Mm. Isaiah 26, 4, trust in Yahweh forever, for in Yah, Yahweh, you have an everlasting rock. Psalms 18, 2, Yahweh is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I have taken refuge, my shield and the horn of my deliverance, my stronghold. Amen. Psalms 62, 7. On God rest my salvation and my glory. God is my strong rock, my refuge. And what does living water represent in the Bible? Jeremiah 17, 13. O oh Yahweh, the hope of Israel, all those who forsake you will be put to shame, and those who turn aside from you in the earth will be recorded, for they have forsaken the fountain of living water, wow. Yahweh. Wow. Mm. John 4, 13 through 14. Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of this water, which I will give to him, will never be thirsty for eternity. Amen. But the water which I will give to him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. Amen. John 7, 37 through 38. Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and let him drink. The one who believes in me, just as the scripture said, out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Amen. Isaiah 44, 3. For I will pour out water on a thirsty land and, and streams on dry ground. I will pour my spirit out on your descendants and my blessing on your offsprings. Come on. So what was the first thing that Moses did that was not on God's instructions list of five specific steps? If you recall, the downfall came when he started talking to the people. This is a critical lesson for us to take note of. Moses had a problem. 
The people were thirsty, which caused them to be rebellious. God provided the answer to Moses. Speak to the rock and the people will get what they need, living water. Instead of speaking to the answer, the rock, Moses spoke to the problem, the rebellious people. Mm. And everything went downhill from that point. Mm. God was trying to teach Moses a spiritual lesson concerning speaking the answer. And Moses chose to speak the problem instead. Wow, did you just hear what I said? This is a critical lesson to learn and apply to our situation today. Mm. God never said to speak to the people and speaking to the people who were the problem was not going to bring Moses the answer. Speaking to his problem and admonishing them that they are his problem would cause them to continue as they were and they would remain his problem because of his words spoken over them. Mm. The people of Israel didn't learn any lesson from this experience. God told Moses that he was not going to lead the people into the promised land because of his lack of faith. Here is what the Bible says about Moses. Deuteronomy 34, 10 through 12. And not again has a prophet arisen in Israel like Moses, whom Yahweh knew face to face, as far as all the signs and the wonders Yahweh sent him to do in the land of Egypt, against Pharaoh and all of his servants, and against all of his land, and as far as all of the mighty deeds, and as far as the great awesome wonders Moses did before the eyes of all of Israel. This was Moses, revered in both the Old and New Testaments, and rightly so. He was chosen by God for a particular mission. He was humble. He was faithful. He listened carefully and then obeyed what God told him to do again and again, except for this one time. Thus coming short of the destiny that God had intended for him. Moses left behind a great legacy for us all. But he also left us a legacy in the many lessons we can learn from his experience and relationship with God. Can you see how his example of failure applies to you and can it help you not to repeat his mistake? If you can, it will radically change what you say to what you say to who and when. Many times it would be better to keep silent and not say anything than to speak the problems, the problem and remain in unbelief and miss out on God's answer to your problem. God told Moses that if he would only speak to the rock, that the rock would obey his words. That statement buckled me for the longest time. God will do what I say? If you would only study the Bible and what it says about the words that you speak, you would certainly change many of the things that you say. Earlier in the book of Numbers, God revealed two things to Moses and Israel that have a direct bearing on everything that I just said about Moses. You see, it would be unjust if God punished Moses for doing something that God had not taught him before. So let's look at number, Numbers 6, 22 through 24. Here is what God, God told, told Moses. Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, you will bless the Israelites. You will say to them, Yahweh will bless you and keep you safe. Yahweh will shine his face on you and be gracious to you. Yahweh will lift up his face upon you and he will give you peace. 
and they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Here God taught Moses and Aaron that they could bless Israel with the words that came out of their mouth. Wow. By them speaking these words over the people, God was able, able to bless them and cause them to prosper. God concluded with, and I will bless them. Here is the principle given. You speak blessings and I will bless them. Did you get this concept? That is exactly the opposite of what Moses said and did. Moses looked at the people and angrily admonished them, calling them rebels. Can God bless these words? No. What actually transpired instead is that Moses ended up cursing his own people with his own words. And that is a major problem. God could not bless Israel because Moses did not follow the instructions God, of God and what God taught him about the power of words. To drive this point home, six chapters earlier than the speak to the rock chapter in number 20, God told Moses something that is very hard not to understand. Here is what God told him. Numbers 14 verse 28 say to them surely as I live declares Yahweh just as you spoke in my hearing so I will do to you let me say it again surely as I live declares Yahweh just as you spoke in my hearing so I will do to you. Bang. God reveals to Moses a spiritual law concerning the words that he speaks. This spiritual law applies across the board to all the people as well as the leadership. God tells Moses that I will do whatever you say. This verse tells me that God listens to the words that come out of my mouth. Whatever I say, that is what God will do to me. I know most believers have a hard time believing this, but this is what God said. I didn't invent it. There are many other, other Bible verses that I could go into right here to confirm what I have just said. You can study them for yourselves and see if they are there. Or you can simply ignore them all and think they do not apply to you. I'll give you a confirmation to what I just taught from the book of Psalms. Psalms 106 verses 32 through 33. They also angered God at the waters of Meribah and it went badly for Moses on account of them. Because they rebelled against his spirit, and he, Moses, spoke thoughtlessly with his lips. Moses spoke thoughtlessly with his lips. In these verses, God tells us that the children of Israel made Moses angry. By making Moses angry, we are informed that he was provoked to speak unadvisedly with his lips. You can clearly see from this verse that it was Moses' thoughtless words and not him striking the rock that was the problem. All those years I thought he, he just... You know, he struck the rock, so what? That's what I was thinking all those years. And then it dawned on me, uh, when Yah put this message on my heart, it, it was something completely different. He spoke thoughtlessly with his lips, okay? Um, this is an extremely valuable lesson to see and learn from. God tells us that he is listening to what we say and that he will do to us whatever we say. If we speak evil, that is what we will get. If we speak good things, that is also what we will get. Wow. Our words affect our outcome and what we get. Amen. Wow. 
because the children of Israel murmured and complained to God about their situation, that is what they got. Remember, the older generation did not enter into the promised land, except for Joshua and Caleb. What made Joshua and Caleb different? What caused Joshua and Caleb to enter, to enter in where the other people their age all died? I implore you to go back and read that story very closely and see what Joshua and Caleb said when the others said the exact opposite. God did, did to Joshua and Caleb what they said, and the others also got what they said. Mm -hmm. Let me close with our beloved Jesus on words from the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Amen. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened for you. And then later, Matthew 12, 36 through 37. But I tell you that every wordless word that they speak, people will give an account for it on the day of judgment. Mm. For by your words, you will be vindicated, and by your words, you will be condemned. So now... I finally understand what my grandma meant when she said, Child, always be careful of what you speak. Whatever your mouth utters out, a voice in heaven will say, and so it is. Amen. Amen. a short prayer uh, based on whatever I just read, based on Psalms 18 and the priestly blessing. So let us pray. Oh Yahweh, our Father in heaven, we love you with all of our heart and with all of our soul. You are our rock our fortress and our refuge. Amen. You are our shield and the horn of our deliverance. We call upon you who is worthy to be praised and you save us from our enemies. In our trouble, we call on you, Father, and you hear our voice and our cry for help. To the loyal, you show yourself loyal. To the blameless, you show yourself blameless. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the wicked, you show yourself shrewd. You light our lamp, Father. May you light up the darkness around us. May you deliver us from our strong enemy and from those who hate us and plot evil against your children. May you, may you gird us with strength and make our way safe. May you give us the shield of your salvation and may your right hand support us. For with you, we can charge a troop and with you, we can scale a wall. Father, we pray to you today, bless us and keep us safe. Shine your face on us and be gracious to us. Lift up your face upon us and give us peace. Put your name on us and bless us. We pray to you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank mm. you.